fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tuttle, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Let go, big fellow! I'm Silver! Hi! The snow had begun to fall early that morning, and by nightfall, it had spread a thick white blanket over the plains and hills of northwest Texas. Large crystal flakes continued to drift downward, swirling in the slight gusts of wind, then coming lazily to rest in shimmering whiteness outside the lean-to in which the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Dan sat in warm and satisfying comfort around a brightly blazing campfire. Dan gazed through the open end of the lean-to at the fascinating scene beyond, with a faraway look in his eyes. (laughs) Suddenly, the boy realized the Lone Ranger and Tonto were laughing at him. Uh, 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 What's the matter? (laughs) We speak to you, Dan. (laughs) You're not here. Your (laughs) mind seems to be far away, Dan. (laughs) Well, all that snow reminded me of something that happened the last time I was visiting the Padre. Oh? What was that? Well, it was a warm day. When I got there, I met a parson who was just getting ready to leave. He was from Stockton. That was Parson Tabor, Dan. He and the Padre are good friends. Yes, I know. Well, I asked the Parson why he didn't wait until the late afternoon to ride, when it'd be cooler. He laughed and said he never would complain of the heat again, since the time he was almost lost in a snowstorm and froze to death. Well, that when him first meet Padre, Dan. Akimasabi, it'd be good if you tell Dan's story of Parson Tabor. Gee, will you, sir? I'd like to hear it. (laughs) All right, Dan. It is a surprising story. I know you'll like it. You see, Jim Tabor didn't intend to be a parson. He didn't? No. His father was a famous lawman, and Jim hoped to be one, too. He loved the feel of a gun, not because it was a weapon to kill, but because it was an instrument for sport. That's right. When Jim Tabor was a boy, he broke his right wrist. For years afterwards, he practiced shooting at targets. And by the time he was 20, he'd won every contest he entered. He gained the admiration and respect of everyone for his ability to draw first and hit the mark. Golly. Then uh, Jim's father began taking him along in posses when tracking outlaws. Again, Jim's ability to draw first and shoot straight caused the capture of many tough outlaws. 
His reputation spread, and he became known as Trigger Jim. You mean the parson I saw at the Padres was... <laughs> uh, get me ahead of my story, Dan. One day, something happened that changed everything for young Jim Tabor. You remember the Carlos gang we rounded up not long ago, don't you? Oh, yes, sir. Well, a few years ago, Carlos had a connection with a gambler in the cafe in Jim's hometown. As I learned later, they planned to get Jim into a fight and wound him so that he wouldn't be able to help out when Carlos raided the town. Even that outlaw, Carlos respected Trigger Jim. One day when Jim was in the cafe, the gambler and his friends talked him into sitting in on a card game. Then what happened? They planned to let Jim see the gambler cheating. One of their men, standing outside the open window, was to shoot Jim as soon as the argument started. And as Jim stood up to draw, Jim reacted just as they thought he would. There. Let's see you beat that, Marlowe. Looks like he's got you, Marlowe. Luck's with you this evening, Jim. Big jackpot for you, Jim. Wait a minute. Maybe I can beat that, Tabor. There. The ace oh, of yes. diamonds. What do you say what to that? Why, oh, you dirty, sneaking cheat. I saw that come out of your sleeve. Uh, look out, everybody. Let's go to fight. Holy mackerel, Tabor. You shot Marlowe. I wasn't looking. Anybody see what happened? Well, Tabor and Marlowe shot at each other. Somebody go get the sheriff. Looked like Tabor The old man's going to have to arrest his own son for murder. No. Stay where you are, all of you. I'm leaving here. And the first one who makes a move will get led. I'm backing to the door. And no one's going to stop me. Jim Tabor got out of the cafe to his horse. Then he hit the trail, covering his tracks in every possible way to throw off the posse he knew would soon be following him. Well, he found a deserted prospector's cabin in the hills. Hanging inside was a dark suit, neat but shabby, which had been left for the former tenant. Jim needed supplies, so hiding his gun in the cabin, he put on the dark suit, which fit fairly well. Then he headed for a new town nearby, where he wasn't known by sight. He went to the general store when he arrived in Stockton. And, uh... Howdy, mister. Good morning. Oh, I haven't seen you around before. You must be a stranger in Stockton. That's right, I am. I want to get a few supplies. I want you to well, give me... Well, if you're fixing to stay in town a spell, we might as well get acquainted. My name's Groat. Tom Groat. What uh, handle do you go by, mister? Hiya. Well, you can just call me Parson. A parson, huh? Well, I guess I should have known you was a preacher, seeing as how you... What I mean is, my name well, is... Well, we was expecting a parson Willis to preach in our new meeting house, but word come, he went somewhere else. He must have heard about Tex Jackson. Tex is a big, tough hombre who runs the cafe and who says he won't let any preacher come here. Might interfere with his business. I see. Well, I'm not interested in oh, staying. Oh, I wish you was interested in staying, Parson. But see here, I I can't preach. <laughs> I'm not really Well, a... we don't expect to get a parson who'll roll us in the aisle with flourishy talking. All we want is one to read the good book to us of a Sunday and say a few words now and then. Why don't you think it over, Parson? Oh. Mr. Grote, you've given me an idea. A great idea. Golly, no one would ever think of looking for an outlaw posing as a preacher. Well, that's right, Dan. That's the way Jim thought, too. At first, it was just a way to hide. But the more he read the Bible and tried to put over its meaning to his flock, the more he came to believe that preaching was what he really wanted to do the rest of his life. He discovered he had a natural flair for making up and preaching sermons. And in a short time... The religious group loved and respected their young new parson. But uh, what about Tex Jackson, sir? Uh, Tex Jackson waited a while before showing his hand. Then, one afternoon, he stopped Jim Tabor in front of the cafe and within earshot of some of the townspeople. Howdy, parson. I want a few words with you. Of course. You're uh, Tex Jackson, aren't you? That's right, I am. 
Guess you heard by now that I don't like preachers. I did hear something like that. But I guess I can live through it, Jackson. Having your dislike, I mean. <laughs> Look here, you word slinging psalm singing coyote. It'd give me great pleasure to beat you to the draw and fill you with lead. But since you don't carry a gun... I wonder if you'd be as brave without your gun, Jackson. Trying to be funny, aren't you, Parson? Save it for the next time you preach, wherever that might be. In the Stockton Meeting House next Sunday morning, if you care to attend. Oh, is that so? Well, listen to this and get it straight. From now on, you're out of a job, understand? So pack up and get out of town. I like Stockton. And I have to admit, I like to preach. So I'm staying. Now look, Parson. Let this sink into that sanctimonious brain of yours. If I catch you preaching in that meeting house Sunday, I'll break every bone in your body. You understand? Gosh, I guess everybody in Stockton was waiting to see what he'd do, weren't they? Yes, Dan, they were. And the tension grew higher as Sunday approached and the parson stayed on. Jim wasn't afraid of Jackson and was determined to see it through. He was young, strong, and courageous. Fully Jackson's equal in a fair fist fight. Did he lick Jackson? <laughs> Let me finish, Dan. It, uh, it was Sunday morning. Jim was at breakfast in the storekeeper's home where he boarded. Parson, do have some more pancakes. Mm. I made them specially for you. <laughs> oh, in that case, Margot, I'll take some more. <laughs> I guess Marthy figures she'll get salvation for sure if she fills the parson up with good food along with her praying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it sure helps the parson a lot. I'll say that much. Oh, you too. <laughs> I declare, Billy, between the two of you, you keep me flustered so much that I hardly know what I'm doing. <laughs> But I like it. Uh, more coffee, Parson? No, thanks. <clears throat> Let's face the facts, Parson. Well? Today's the day, you know. That hombre Jackson's a mighty mean customer. Likely to gun you down if he gets mad enough. Oh, he, he wouldn't. Well, anyways, I think the Parson ought to carry one of my guns to protect himself. No. I'll face him without a gun, Mr. Grote. I sure wish that masked hombre old Jay Cardy told me about would get here today. Bet he'd see to Tex Jackson. Masked hombre, you say? Yes. Oh, uh, Pa was telling me last night. Seems like uh, Jake was over in Benton yesterday and found out that masked man on the big white stallion, the man who's known as the Lone Ranger and helps the law, is coming here. Sir... The Lone Ranger coming here? Yeah. Seems he got a line on Trigger Jim. Guess you've heard about him. Yes. Yes, I have. He's another one who'd scare the daylights out of Tex Jackson. Used to be a young lawman, you know, before he got accused of a killing. You can spot Trigger Jim right off by the funny way he has a draw and a gun. But he draws like lightning. When the Lone Ranger... I, uh... I have to leave now. Pardon me. Oh, whatever did you say to make him look like that? Hmm. You know, Martha, he looked downright scared. I... I'm afraid that because of Tex Jackson, we're going to lose another parson. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Dan Reed, young nephew of the Lone Ranger, was intensely interested as the masked man continued his story of Parson Tabor. Well, the old storekeeper was right, Dan. Jim left the house and rode out of town that Sunday morning. Gee, then he was afraid of Tex Jackson. Oh, no, Dan, no. Him afraid of Lone Ranger. But why? You see, Dan, Jim Tabor thought I'd found out that the new Parson was really Trigger Jim had been accused of murder. Oh. He took his horse and rode out of Stockton that morning without a word to anyone. It was snowing heavily and steadily getting worse. Yet the whole town turned out to gather in front of the meeting house. Everyone was quiet and tense as Tex Jackson and his cronies approached from the cafe. Here comes Tex Jackson and his bunch. I wonder where the parson is. <laughs> Where are you, bunch of psalm singers? Who's that big talking parson of yours? Tex Jackson, you just ought to be ashamed of yourself. If I was a man, I'd take a whip to you, that's what. Ah, oh, shut up. Quiet, Marty, quiet. Talking won't do no good now. Well, where is he? Bring him out and I'll douse him in a snowdrift. Uh, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the parson isn't inside, Tex. He isn't here yet. And he isn't coming here either. Saw him lighting out of town like a scared rabbit more than an hour ago. <laughs> we all know he's yelling. We know he won't be back. <laughs> now listen. Oh, you hombres have been letting these women folk drag you in a meeting. Come out over the cafe. I'm treating everybody. And from now on, there'll be Sunday meetings in my cafe. You'll be saved from that word slinging parson. <laughs> now let's go, man. <laughs> So some of the parson's flock went home, while others of the men, having lost faith in him, followed Jackson to the cafe. Golly. Meantime, Jim rode all that day while the snowstorm grew in intensity. He lost all sense of direction, but still he pressed on. During the night, his horse gave out on him. Jim pushed forward on foot. Oh, that must have been awful. Yes, it was, Dan. He didn't dare stop for fear of freezing to death. He had no food and the sharp driving snow blinded him. Finally, his steps faltered. He felt he could go no further. Can't... Can't go any further. I... The sermons I gave. The words I believed in. I tried to... to make them believe it. <laughs> Jim Tabor, you're a fool. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> they, they do mean something. They do. <laughs> For he who takes the word of God and keeps it shall have life everlasting. Yes. Yes, I do believe that. I do. Bells. I, I hear them. No, it can't be. Yes. Yes, I do hear them. Keep them ringing. Please keep them ringing till... Till I find my way there. Please. Of the mission bells urged Jim on. Let him new strength. Did he really hear bells? Yes, Danny did. And they kept ringing. The padre told me later that the wind had loosened the ropes and the force of the wind made them ring. Jim reached the mission and the padre took him in. Jim remembered nothing until the next day when he opened his eyes and saw the padre beside his cot holding some hot broth. Here, my son, I've brought you some hot broth. You, you're a padre. Those bells, they must have been... Yes, the mission bells. The wind loosened the ropes. They led me to this place, padre. And most welcome, me, amigo. Here, take the broth while it's hot. No, not yet, padre. I, I must talk to you. As you wish. 
I observed by your apparel that you are a man of the cloth, mi amigo. We lead our flocks to the same destination by different paths. You may speak freely, my son. I will bear your confidence. I... I'm a self-appointed parson, Padre. I, I had a congregation in Stockton. Ah, I've heard of your good works there. You filled the office well. Very well, Parson Jim. But... But I've got to tell you, I've got to... Tell me what, amigo. Why, I was in the storm. I ran away. Oh, not because of what they think, but... But because a masked man who helps the law, the Lone Ranger, was coming after me. You see, I'm triggered, Jim. I know. My son, it was two days ago you came to the mission. What? Two days? Yes. Today, a friend of mine has come to see me. He's waiting in the outer room. I want you to meet him. But I... Oh, what difference can it make? Bring him in, Padre. I'll sit up. Will you come in now, my friend? Of course, Padre. I stepped into the room. Jim recognized me at once and turned with a look of disbelief and anger to the Padre. But before he could speak, I told him I'd hunted him to tell him he'd been exonerated. Marlowe had been killed by one of his own men. The look on his face then was worth seeing. I gave him a gun, and he said what I wanted to hear, that he would return to face Tex Jackson. Golly! The next day, Trigger Jim was ready and able to travel. We made our plans as we rode... And upon reaching the outskirts of Stockton that night, Jim waited while I rode to the storekeeper's home and told the old man and his wife to spread the news that the parson was really Trigger Jim, that he'd come back with guns to meet Tex Jackson at noon the next day. Then what happened, sir? The next day, Tonto met us. We left Jim Tabor at the edge of town to wait until noon. Did the old man and lady pass the word around? <laughs> And them tell everybody. <laughs> Tonto and I moved in close and stationed ourselves on the roof of a low building overlooking the main street. We wanted to be ready in case Jackson's men started anything. The street was lined with people. Everyone was there, watching, waiting, quiet and tense. At noon, Tex Jackson walked from the cafe with his men behind him. Maybe it's a bluff, Tex. Don't let a parson scare you, Jackson. Draw it five yards and plug in, Tex. <laughs> Don't worry, boys. I'm sure it's a bluff. There comes the parson, man. Down the middle of the street. Why, he's dressed like Trigger Jim. He's wearing a gun, all right. The parson, Trigger Jim, walks slowly and steadily toward Tex Jackson. Tex Jackson walks slowly with a sneering smile on his face. Then, as he neared the oncoming figure, the smile disappeared. His step began to falter. He remembered remarks he had heard in the past. Trigger Jim never got beaten a draw. That hombre never lost a fight. He always hit the bullseye. His right wrist sort of bends out when he's getting ready to draw. He's not for me. Jackson lowered his eyes and stared at the wrist of the approaching man. He saw that the right wrist bent outward. Then he knew he was facing the famous Trigger Jim. Beads of sweat burst out on his brow and ran down his face. He saw eyes. Eyes everywhere watching him. Waiting for him to draw. But he dared not. Slowly the two men came together and stopped ten paces apart. I'm waiting, Jackson. I'll give you the count of ten to draw. One, two, three, four, five. Then it happened. Six, the crowd gasped as Tex Jackson, seven, the town bully, groveled in the street. No, no, I, I can't do it. Look out. I'll toss out my gun. Don't draw a trigger. Don't shoot me. Don't. Get up, Jackson, and go back to your cafe. I'm going back to my preaching. But remember this. From now on, the parson in Stockton will always carry a gun to protect those who want to practice their faith. I've come home to stay. Yeah! 
That's the story, Dan. Those mission bells really brought the parson back home. Listen a moment. Golly, I almost hear them ringing now. You do hear bells ringing, Dan. But those bells are in Stockton. You see, the Padre and his congregation donated them to Parson Jim Tabor's church. Oh, that's fine. Tonto, remember the first time they rang was on Christmas Eve? Ah, you remember. Oh, they're ringing again. But why are they ringing tonight? Because, Dan, in his church at Stockton... The parson is having a midnight watch service. I, uh, I was going to suggest that we ride over to attend. Golly, I'd like to, sir. Oh, that, that good. Um, me go saddle horses. And then we go to Stockton. And with the Christ child, there in a stable in Bethlehem, was born the fervent wish... In the hearts of all mankind, for peace on earth, goodwill toward men. See that man going up the aisle with the collection basket? Yes, sir. Who is he? The cafe owner, Tex Jackson. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.